Greetings, most astute doge, Enrico Dandolo of Venice, master of statecraft and shrewd negotiator. Although you rose to power late in life, old age did little to slow your cunning or ambition as you deftly managed the bustling commercial center of Venice during a time of great instability. In aligning yourself with the Fourth Crusade, you carefully gained strategic advantage and used the Crusaders to reacquire lost territory for Venice. Your role in guiding the Crusaders during the sacking of Constantinople led to an even greater expansion of your power and secured your legacy throughout history. Most insightful and cunning doge, Venice once again requires the service of a skilled leader, one who can bring the Republic back to the forefront of world affairs. Can you establish your nation through careful trade, or will you work to conquer your enemies through diplomacy? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? So as for now it is said, we're playing as Enrico of Venice, and they only have the one city, only this one settler, you cannot make any more, so let's settle it right here. And this is the permanent city in Venice. So we're just playing on an archipelago map at the moment, on King difficulty, where the AI cheats, but only a little bit. Playing on standard speed. So an archipelago map is basically just loads of little islands. In a massive ocean. Also, we have a city-state. I didn't expect that, because the last time I played this map, there was only me here. Because I like to play on um, epic game pace, but then I realised that if I am going to be spending the entirety of um, the start of the game completely alone here, with no one to talk to, it's probably not going to be too entertaining to watch, so I decided to speed up a little bit and go back to normal pace. So, the basic gimmick behind Venice is that they only have this one city, and I could go and puppet Riga here and get a second city by using a merchant of Venice, which is an upgrade to their great merchant, which is otherwise a, ba a basically useless uh, guy who just gives you a little bit of money and influence, usually. Also not playing with any of the, um, what are they called, barbarians on the map, because barbarians on Archipelago are really annoying to get rid of, they're just going to keep destroying my trade routes, and frankly, I just want to sit here. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it? What makest thou? We want to be the trade prince, or king rather, according to the difficulty. And just sit here and make money, and that's pretty much the goal of our game. We don't care about conflict, we don't care about wars. Hell, we don't even care so much about diplomacy. We're going to win with the vote, but it's going to be due to our gold, but we're going to make it. Let's go get ourselves a shrine. So with us, with our general mindset at the moment, how we're going to win is that when we hit this point of the game, the information atomic era, we're going to win the game. It's just going to happen, because uh, the United Nations is going to form, and we're naturally just going to win. Because we're going to get all the votes from all these city-states because we're going to have the money to do it. Right, let's head down here, just finish off exploring our little island. And then I'm just going to send the guy back home. We may as well build a great library just because we can. We are next to a mountain here, so our science is going to be pretty nice. We're also next to two desert tiles here, so we could questionably get Petra. But Petra is kind of hard to get normally, so... Getting it against AI is going to be on when they can cheat is going to be even harder. We may just ignore it. We're going to be ignoring a lot of wonders because we don't really mind about them. As long as if no one beats us in tourism before we get the world vote, then we're okay. Okay, tradition is a no-brainer here. We get a free extra culture per turn and our borders grow a bit more. So hopefully we'll get this cocoa here before Riga does. We can't buy the cocoa tile, so we'll have to just hope we can get it manually. Because it would give us extra cocoa to trade. Also this second tile here, which we may just buy to stop them from getting it. That's a worthy use of gold. Because we could 
buy out their city's data and make it our permanent partner, but we'd really prefer to just use them to trade with. Especially if they're going to be right next to us here. Alright, our guys can just come home. I would leave them for the extra one gold per turn, um, but I think at the moment it may just be better to have them just so the AI when they find us don't get any ideas. Actually, never mind. Let's delete him. Oh, he didn't get any gold per turn extra. Well, that was a waste. Oh well. Now I've got sheep tile. He who destroys a good book kills reason itself. I think these guys are going to work on that sheep tile. You're not. Come on, guys. It's a sheep tile. It's great. Now, but after we build the shrine, we're going to go and make ourselves the great library. And then we're going to work towards this down here, this wonderful Colossus. Because that gives us a trade route, and the thing I haven't explained yet is that Venice, on top of their other perk of not being able to actually um, make other cities, is that they get double trade routes, which is how they make all their money. So as soon as we get the Colossus, we won't just get one trade route, we're going to get two. Now then, here we have a questionable option. We could go and get ourselves extra wonder production, since we are going to now be making a great library. Or we could go and get ourselves working towards making a worker. Because actually getting a worker from our town takes some time, and we'd prefer not to do that, to be honest. So it could be worth going down the Liberty Tree and just making it so we get a free worker. And I'm going to go do that. You just get one culture per turn, which um, I suppose is helpful, but at the same time it, the social policies do keep increasing, so it's not really going to be that helpful. Now we are going to have to stagnate here if we're wanting to make the Great Library any quicker. Can we buy the deer tile? We can. Let's buy the deer tile, shall we? We're not going to stagnate, we're going to be making the library slower, but it'll be okay. We're going to starve if we do it that way. I think I'll wait until the next turn. Or well, the next settler, though. Settler? The next, uh... Whatever it's called. Population growth, that's the one. I really hope we can get that cocoa. I think I'll buy one of these two tiles here, and then hopefully they'll move on to the cocoa. So since on the first game we were playing on Prince difficulty, I'll just mention here that when I say the computer cheats, that's accurate because they automatically start the game with pottery now, and every other, di every other difficulty they get, they'll start with one more of these starting texts. And I believe they then go on to get writing on the final one, but I'm not perfectly sure on that. And they also get um, extra production, extra city growth, extra troops, extra troop production. You know, basically they just cheat all around. Another population. Oh, why would you go and get that? The meek shall inherit the earth, but not its mineral rights. Why would you get that tile? That's not a good tile. Why couldn't you get this one or that one? So I can get the cocoa. Come on, game. Well, let's see if we can stagnate and get ourselves some extra hammers. Yeah, we can. Let's do that then. Well, we may as well move this free food tile to a free food one gold tile. Can't see no other extra gold. How much will it cost to buy one of those two tiles? 75 gold. If we hit 75 gold before Riga grabs that, I may buy that tile and hope that we can get the cocoa. It's a very high likelihood that Riga will expand there though, because that is a very good tile to get.
We got ourselves a Pantheon. Now since we are just playing with Venice where we only have the one city, um, this is a perfect time to use my favourite Pantheon, which I wish I could use even more, which is God King. We get one culture, one faith, one gold, one hammer and one science in our capital city. We only have a capital city, so this is very nice to us. There you go, we are the God Prince. And the Trade Prince. Or the God King, rather. If I get a great general, I may steal that Coco Tile if I still have Riga. But then again, I'm going to have Riga as an ally, so I'm going to get this Coco anyway. So I really shouldn't worry about that. with our money we're going to get, we're going to basically own every city-state in the game. Unless of course Alexander's in the game, in which case it may be a little bit annoying. Because Alexander likes to get all the city-states ridiculously friendly. It is annoying to stagnate our capital, especially this early on. You Hector and with a spear eleven cubits long in his hand, the bronze point gleamed in front of him and was fastened to the shaft of the spear by a ring of gold. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Okay, now we're not going to worry about getting iron working here, because we're going to get that for free with our um, thingy, Great Library. We're going to go towards getting Animal Husbandry. Stonehenge since we're not going to be getting much faith at all, but I really don't worry about what happens with our religion, as long as if we get one, and there is a high chance of that because um, four religions can be founded and there's only six players in the game, and usually not all the AI brushes towards religion, so even with only two per turn there's a good likelihood we might get one. If we don't then it will be a shame, but we don't have to worry about it, we'll be fine. Okay, we've got the iron tile, we may as well work that instead of this desert. Yeah, so this is just a nice little quaint island run right now, and I like it. You know, the last time I played this one it was on epic pace, and I gave up just after making great libraries, I realised it was going to take way too long. Um, yeah, I was able to get that. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. But to be honest, like having Riga this near of a neighbour is just going to mean it's even easier to trade with him early on, so there's really not much of a loss to it. I much prefer that rather than having this whole island to myself, to be honest. Right, someone's making culture and faith from their pantheon. Now we could get the Temple of Artemis, which is 10% growth, which is handy, but yeah, it's not something we need to worry about, to be honest. Now Petra would be nice here because we could get an extra trade route from it, as well as getting an upgrade to those two tiles. So let's see if we can get Petra. Because anything that gives us trade routes is incredible. Because every trade route we have is extra gold we're going to be getting. Eventually, extra influence as well, because we're going to go going freedom. I like to go freedom usually, but for us, it's going to be exceptional because freedom is based completely around trading to city states. Now, sadly, since I don't have the in game music in, because I'm using some other music instead that hopefully won't get content ID'd, um, he doesn't say any of this, it's really weird. Like, this is counted as music rather than speech. I don't know why, that's stupid, but whatever game. Right, and now you can make iron working. Do not wait to strike till the iron is hot, but make it hot by striking. It's like you hear all these, but you don't hear the things he says after making a wonder. Proud is the spirit of Zeus fostered kings. Their honor comes from Zeus, and Zeus, god of counsel, loves them. It's a pretty weird choice, to be honest. Like, I know that music plays when you make one of the wonders, but at the same time, like, you'd think that they would split the two of them up. Right, make the Colossus. Then we'll get extra two trade routes. And then we'll start trading with Riga. Like, we could make a trade route now, but we'd have to go into sailing to get that. And since the Colossus gives us a free boat anyway, we may as well trade to Riga once we get that. Let's see, 16 turns, 18 turns. I'm pretty sure 
sure we can afford to go back to a little bit extra growth. I don't think we're going to lose the Colossus. Like, they do rush the Colossus, but I think I'm probably the only one who's gone down this path. So I don't think two turns is going to be a huge loss. The haft of the arrow had been feathered with one of the eagle's own plumes. We often give our enemies the means of our own destruction. Now we could make ourselves an archer, we don't need to worry about it at the moment. Don't know why he's growing towards the ocean. Like, there's far more useful towers over here, guys. Whatever. I do hope we do get many of these towers, to be honest. How much does it cost to get extra tiles? Still too much. 75 gold is going to be the cheapest to buy one of these towers near him. And the jungle would be nice, because that will be eventually to science. Even though, like I said before, science isn't too much of an importance to us. Because once it hits the information era, then we'll win the game. It doesn't matter if we hit the information era or not. Right, let's get ourselves a citizen. And now you can go around and start making us... Let's see, one extra production for the iron. One extra food for the sheep. Tough choice. How long will it take? It'll take you too long to get there. You may as well work on the sheep, to be honest, mate. You're already working that tile anyway. Range combat strength. Oh, Regan wants me to make the Temple of Artemis. You know, if I have the free time to do it after this, I will do it, mate. You know, if it isn't taken yet, which I'm pretty sure it will be. Only people like Boudicca tend to rush the Temple of Artemis that I've noticed, but at the same time, it is being left up a long time, so, you know. Very high likelihood I'm gonna lose it. Wisdom and virtue are like the two wheels of a cart. Let's see, how far away is that fish? One, two, three, four. We can't work the fish. We can work that tile if we can get it. We can work that tile, we can't work that fish. One, two, three. For. We can't work that cocoa, but we can still get it to trade. So yeah, as a whole, this is a pretty good start. Like we got the mountain, we got the river, we got some deserts so we can make Petra if we're lucky. Everything's pretty solid. We've got quite a few uh, cows and sheep. To be honest, if every tile was a sheep tile, everyone would be happy. Sheep tiles are great. Cattle tiles are great too. Work on that marble, that will be handy. Have we done uh, my we haven't done masonry yet. To be honest, I don't think it'll be worth getting the extra 15% production towards wonders. At the cost of five turns of science at the moment. Right, let's go get ourselves that cattle. Because we need to get towards Petra as soon as possible. Like, it's even worth losing the Hanging Gardens to get Petra, because the Hanging Gardens is only going to give us six food, which is very nice, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, it's worth losing that to Petra, because of the trade routes. where we uh, won't be able to get started on the Hanging Gardens yet. Mathematics is the gate and key to the sciences. How long is Hanging Gardens? 25 turns. I think it is worth ignoring that for Petra. I, I love Hanging Gardens. Six food is great, but yeah, I think it's worth it. I want to make sure I definitely get Petra. I want the trade routes. They're far more important than the food. So we're going to ignore making Hanging Gardens. Okay, what are you growing? Working that tile? Yeah, sure, work that tile, why not? Hey, we got some workers. We could go steal them, 
but there's really no point. Also, we don't actually have someone who can steal them anymore. Right, we're getting one extra hammer from the cattle now. That's very good. Let's go get the mine on the iron. And then we'll run over and go get the masonry. Why man he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. Indeed. Right, so we get extra gold for our trade routes, we get extra gold in our capital, and we can send a trade route automatically. That'll make Riga happy. They don't have an actual quest to make a trade route, but who minds? Trying to start the Hanging Gardens at least. Maybe just make the granary. Oh, they've got a stolen that tile. Well, we may as well buy this last tile that's here. We don't have that tile anymore, which is a shame. I should have uh, remembered to buy that earlier. Oh well, it doesn't matter. We don't have to buy anything else. Like, we could go buy some more tiles. We could buy that, for example, but I don't think we really need to. I think we're all working on good tiles at the moment. Yeah, we've got good tiles worked on. Actually, it's going to take six turns. We'll be 
be unhappy for one turn. Oh well, we'll deal with it. Now we could make Machu Picchu, which is extra gold. We could make extra gold. Should we make extra gold? You know what? Yeah, why not? Let's make extra gold. The city connections is going to be literally useless to us, but we make we make five gold. And we get a great merchant point, why not? Let's make it. We are the trade prince after all, let's have the most useless wonder that's going to really annoy other people. I suppose that we should really go for philosophy first. Like, it requires calendar anyway, which we need for some luxuries. And the oracle, it would be better, I suppose. It is worth saying that these national buildings, you need one of everything in your cities. They're all going to be incredibly easy to get as Venice, since we only have for one city. We never have to worry about that. I'm surprised none of the AI have built any wonders yet. And then in before they built Petra. How you doing, Vega? Still pals? We're still pals. Yeah, the city states will never get mad at you, for, even if your borders touch them and stuff, like the AI will start getting uh, pissy and start declaring wars and stuff. These city states don't do a thing. They will only declare war with you if, um, if another AI player is allied with them and if they tell them to go to war. So teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Still going to take them one more turn. That's a problem. We're going to be unhappy for a turn. It's fine. Don't worry about it, guys. We'll get marble soon. Your people are no longer happy. Ah, don't worry about it. Here we go. And we're happy again. We now have marble, which is 50% production towards these wonders that I'm currently making. Yes, we're going to be happy for another four growth, and then we'll have to make the cocoa by then, but that'll be fine. We can do that now, to be honest. Let's go do it. Hey, someone's finally built Stonehenge. Let's put a plantation. Sadly, we do need to get rid of the jungle for that, but it's okay. It's more worth having the money from trading it, because after all, we are the trade king. God King. I wonder if we should buy that mountain. Like, there's no point to it, but because I mean, you literally can't work the mountain, but they do it anyway. How much is it? 65 gold. Eh, we'll think about it. Oh, we could then just buy a stoneworks up front. This goes as one production, one happiness. Let's do it. gold per turn and we haven't even met any other players yet. This is what uh, Enrico is all about, making money. We're gonna have a lot of cocoa to trade as well. Oops, someone's made a Pantheon. More production from fishing boats. Quote from Indiana Jones there, now we're gonna get extra food, extra production six culture later down the line, but mainly we get another two trade routes. We've already got six trade routes at the moment. That's incredible. And we can even send this one. Actually, no, we can't send this to Riga because um, apparently we're not allowed to send two trade routes to them, even if one is land and one is sea. That's a little bit annoying. We'll just tell this guy to sleep. Because uh, we may end up just sending him to Riga later and send the boat we've currently got to someone else when we find them. 